Hey guys, so here's a fun sort of hack and it's absolutely not guaranteed to work every time, but it's in a pinch, it could work for you. So you should know by now in Photoshop, and if you don't, I'll show you that if you go to color range under select menu and choose skin tones, that you can have Photoshop select the skin tone. You can make that even easier by choosing subject selection first. And you'll notice that's going to load for a second because I have subject selection on cloud processing, always more accurate. You can go to subject selection first and go to color range and select skin tones. Now you notice, of course, I've got a monochrome image and skin tones are lost. I have no idea what skin tones are. It's just literally guessing, hoping, um, mostly just dealing with luminosity guesses. It doesn't work in black and white. And you might think, well, I always convert to black and white when I'm done with the edit. I don't need this. Well, sometimes you don't. Sometimes after the fact, you want to change something. And some people, including myself, will occasionally do a black and white conversion in RAW. Then you go to Photoshop and you do your edit and you're like, oh man, I wish I could select a skin real quick to do a change. Dark and light and add contrast, something. And you're like, man, okay, I don't have, I don't have the, you know, the color range selection for skin tones. Well, there's a way to do it. Um, I wouldn't say it's, it's guaranteed, but it's fun. So let's show you real quick. Here's what I do. Okay. I'll show you the whole process. And then if you want, you can uh, download a, an action that I can give you for free in the description. You can download it to, to make it happen. Again, it's a uh, hope for the best kind of thing, but let me show you. So I duplicate the background layer and immediately I go to the neural filters under, under filters. You probably guess where this is going if you haven't done it before, but you go to colorize. Okay. And it uses this neural brain to try to colorize. Now you're looking at the skin tones and I'm a little concerned about the black outfit having some, you know, tannish type of tones. So I'll come over here to the manual color, color image modification. I'll click her outfit and I'll choose black and hope that it will hopefully. Yeah. Okay. So it took a lot of the color. There's a blue in the pants. So that's okay. For the most part, her skin tone looks okay. Now, I don't know about this example, but on sometimes on, uh, when you use neural filter for this, some of the skin tone will become, uh, like bright red. And if you have to solve that, what you do is I, I go to hue and saturation, I'll go to the reds and I'll shift it towards like a little more yellow like that. But I also target, I'll try to target exactly the range I'm in, try not to target the yellows just to shift the bright red, find my balance or whatever. I can even increase saturation if I feel like it's going to help Photoshop. Okay. All right. So then I flatten that. And then we talked about the, um, color range and skin tone selection. And that's great. But I'm going to show you an extra tip. What you want to do is you want to send it chroma data. I have videos on that. You can you can check those out if you want. But here's here's what I do to send it chroma data. Okay, I'm going to duplicate it again. I'm going to go to fill shift F5. And we're going to ship, fill it 50% gray luminosity blending mode. Now we have chroma data. We turn that off for a second, go back to our colorized shot, go to subject. Again, I have it on cloud processing. So it's going to be a little more accurate. Okay. As soon as that finishes, we go back to our chroma layer and here is where we go to color range. And then our skin tones are reasonably showing up. Now, naturally they're blurred and strange because the selection is blurred and strange, uh, but that's what happens with the neural filter. So we can try to increase this until, you know, uh, it's not doing too much. The, the, the chroma data is as accurate as it's gonna get. That's as accurate as it's gonna get. So now I had the skin tone selected, turn everything off or, or delete them, go back to the original. And then if I were to go to curves, for example, now I have control of the skin tone on the black and white, which again, you know, you may not want to do, but sometimes you might want to, right? And I have an action you can download that basically does this and you can hope it'll work. Let's try another one. Let's go to this example, duplicate. Okay. Right. Again, again, neural filters. It's always a good idea to, if you can do this manual, even if you have an action running, because if your action just is a complete disaster, run this process manually. It could be Photoshop's uh, neural brain. Uh, messing up on some selections. Okay, so I'm going to go to right here in the midsection of her stomach. And I'm going to choose like more of a, again, a brownish. It does not matter. Let's see what it does. And okay, not bad. Very red, very red. But for the most part, everything I don't want, subject is going to take care of most of the selection. Everything I don't want looks okay. I'm concerned right here. I want that to be not that color. I want it to be very low saturation. So we don't get too much, hopefully too much skin tone. There we go. Okay. Hit. Okay. As a reminder, let's run the, uh, the chroma process, duplicate it, fill 50% gray. There's our chroma. Come over here to the colorized layer subject. Give that a second to think about subject. Now for the most part, it does pretty well. I have some other videos I'm going to create about helping subject selections brain C. Oops. Wrong thing. We go to our chroma layer color range. Okay. All right. Great. No, but it's something. There we go. There we go. 
Okay, turn those off and let's see what kind of result we can get. Let's look at the whole picture. So here again, I can go to light curves and brighten and darken. And at least I had the basic selection of skin tone, even on a black and white automatically. Let's try one more. Again, we're going to duplicate both this time. We're going to go to the first one. We're going to go to neural filters. And let's see, let's see what kind of result we get on this one. Colorize. And okay, we got a lot of red here, but it looks like it's okay. I'm not gonna try to remove the skin tone from the hair. Brown hair, light blonde hair, even you know, medium brown hair gets involved. Red hair gets involved in the skin tone selection range. That's normal on a color photograph. If I try to get it out of here, it's probably gonna get confused, maybe, at least in my experience. So I'm gonna leave it, but I do have that red. That's a concern. So I go to my hue and saturation. Go to my reds, shift away from yellow and see if I can tone those down a bit. And looks like I can't. Perfect. OK. Flatten that. Oh, I didn't need to copy that one. I need to copy the color one. Come on. There we go. Fill 50% <clears throat> gray luminosity. Come back to hue and saturation subject. And <laughs> clouds always a little slower. And while I'm recording, it's even slower. Color range. There we go. I would call that acceptable. And then turn those off, come here. Let's choose, uh, let's choose brightness and contrast and I can increase contrast. And of course the mask is still something that I can edit. You know, if I'm, if I'm really, really committed to this idea and oops, I'm on the trackpad right now. I don't have my Wacom attached. So, uh, if I'm really committed to this, and I really want to make it work. I can just get rid of the hair real quick. And there we go. Now I can add or reduce contrast, brighten the skin, darken the skin, etc. even on a black and white image. So I recommend trying that out. Um, you can download the action. Like I said, it is not even remotely a guarantee, but depending on how the neuro filter does, it could be a real saving grace for you when you need to make a skin tone mask. Like on this shot, the skin tone mask would be a little bit of a trick. Um, you know, even though we could start with subject selection and that's great, it's a little bit better when you want to, you know, really define the different areas, like on an outfit or whatever. In fact, I'm actually lying to you. This actually would be an easier selection than some of the other ones, something like this. Um, even though it's very doable, it, if you have an action and it does work, it could be absolutely perfectly quick. In fact, let's find out. Let's go ahead and run my action. Let's see what it does on its own. Ooh, that purple action here, MVP Magic 2023. That's coming out soon. Unless you're watching this video in the future, then it's already been out. Let's see what the action does. Okay, you know what? That's not bad. So go ahead and download the action if you want. You can see it generally selects skin tone pretty well, even on a black and white. Thanks for watching.